Hey all, here OS Reviews, you're watching our review of the GTEC E180. This is a mini 3D printer that retails for about $250, sometimes goes on sale for even less, making it a rather affordable model to get started with. What's unique about it is it's also a Wi-Fi cloud connected model. So it has a 3.2 inch touchscreen display on the front here that you can use to control the printer and you can connect it to the internet and using a companion app that you can find for iOS or Android, you're able to remotely print content. So as long as the printer is turned on, you can just you know, tell the app to print a, a certain design even if you're not in the same building, which is pretty cool. What's unique is it also has a micro SD card that you can load with .g code or 3D sliced files for direct printing without even connecting to a computer, although obviously you can still connect it by USB. Uh, so taking a closer look, this is what you get inside the packaging. There's also a free string of filament along with an aluminum stand that you see on the right. And it also comes with a one piece of this adhesive tape that you can either cut or just put directly onto the board here. And that covers up the aluminum because uh, it's not a heated board. And as a result, as you're printing using the plastic, uh, if it's contacting something really cold, it's not gonna stick very well. And the plastic might create spirals and shapes that you don't want. So you want something like this, which has a nice texture for the plastic to stick on, as well as uh, have a more even temperature so that the print is more consistent. And you also have access to this instruction manual. Now I have to print, have to point out that this manual isn't very thick in terms of documentation. And even though this is marketed as a very easy to use, uh, kind of first time mini 3D printer, it still has a significant learning curve if you haven't printed anything before. So there's actually a 50 page user manual that you can find online just by Googling GTEC E180 that takes you through a more detailed process of how to set it up step by step and how to start off with a print. So let's start with a quick discussion of the design and build. Overall, I thought that the construction quality is good. It's made primarily out of a plastic material, but it feels fairly well built together along with some metal accents along some of the buttons and edges where there's moving parts. So overall construction is good. It doesn't take up that much space on a desk either compared to a conventional 3D printer. And that's largely because the, the print surface is only 13 uh, centimeters by 13 centimeters by 13 centimeters in cubic volume. The area itself isn't huge, but you can always scale your prints to the size of you need or print out various parts and then stick them together yourself. Along the back you'll find this nozzle where you insert the PBS plastic and it takes just a 0.5 millimeter plastic, it works just fine. And basically how you do it, there's a pull tab on the bottom that you would have to press down and then string the entire thing through this uh, plastic tube until it reaches the heated compartment here. And then there's a motor inside that will automatically adjust and pull the string through as it's actually printing and that works pretty well. Um, there's also a side panel here that is made out of plastic that uh, is actually very important. And I say important because you guys may remember that we actually did our unboxing and first impressions for the E180 about two to three months ago. And one of the reasons why it's taken us so long to actually complete this review is because the firmware or software that's loaded onto a tiny SD card inserted into the circuit board was somehow corrupted. And I mean that because when you power on the unit, I would get a white screen or a black screen, nothing would appear. And from there, I was not really sure how to continue testing out the printing. And it turned out that it was a pretty simple fix. Basically, you remove this door and if I kind of pan around and zoom in, you'll see this is actually the part where the micro SD card is uh, located. Uh, it sits right there and you simply would tap on um, the edge here for the memory card to pop out as you can see there and tap on it again for it to uh, put back in. The default memory card is only 128 megabytes which is pretty small but perhaps the quality isn't the best or maybe it got a little bit loose during transportation since this is a fully assembled 3D printer that comes in the box. Um, so the recommendation if you get a white screen error is to remove this panel and then put the SD card back in a few times to see if it will read. If not, you can just take another memory card, that's what I did, and I put the same kind of source files into the root directory of the SD card, popped it back then, and now everything is working. And on the back you also find access to the second micro SD card slot. That's for inserting, again, files that you want to print directly without connecting to a computer. There's a USB port and a power supply switch. So overall, again, the design seems to be fairly good in terms of the hardware, but again, the memory card uh, that they're using for the loading the OS of the printer doesn't seem to be of the highest quality, and that really is one of my only cons. All right, so let's dive into the OS and the performance next. I'm gonna tap on the power key, it lights up as you can see there. A slight fan noise can be uh, heard, it just uh, turns on when the machine is on. But when you're actually printing and the nozzle gets to higher temperatures like 200 degrees Celsius, uh, it will you know, turn on and get a little bit louder as well, but this is the background noise that it produces. You can see that the screen here is fairly bright. Uh, it is a resistive touchscreen. 
On the top, you'll see there's a time or countdown timer. So if you're printing files on an SD card, it actually tells you, you know, it's four hours or 30 minutes remaining out of your print session, which is pretty cool. And the interface here is very simple. You have two languages, Chinese or English. If I go into control, for instance, I can change things like leveling. I can move it around. I can adjust the fan settings. I can uh, try putting in some filament as well as adjust the speed of the print. So from here, I want to point out that there is no auto leveling feature, so you have to do this process manually. Uh, basically, what this involves is you'll see that uh, the nozzle will start to go down onto the board. And uh, what you want is that, of course, the nozzle to be ever so slightly touching the board so that when you're printing, um, it's going to start off you know, pretty evenly on this area and then move up gradually. You don't want it to be lopsided, you don't want it to be too loose or to too tight, uh, otherwise it's going to smear across the board. And you can adjust this by tapping on Z, which is up, or Z down, uh, to change the distance or height from the board if it's not calibrated properly. And you can tap on various points for it to go to dif different parts of the board to make sure that everything is precise. So for instance, tapping on 4, it's going to go over to this corner. Tapping on 3, it's going to go over to this corner and then 5 is just going to go to the center. Um, and how you calibrate this uh, is actually just using a regular piece of paper that you would just uh, slide underneath and then see if you can pull on the paper. Uh, if it's ever so slightly tight, then the calibration is fine. And again, it's pretty easy to set this part up. It takes just about 20 seconds or so. Alright, so next I'm going to quickly discuss how you start the process of loading the filament and uh, testing if the nozzle and the extruder are working properly. Um, so you tap on the filament tab, and from here you can see the current temperature is just 16 degrees Celsius. And uh, the instruction manual tells you to actually tap on up to uh, assert to about 200 degrees or so um, in order to start testing if it's going to be melting the plastic uh, correctly and if the motors for ex pulling the plastic through is working as well. So we're going to tap onto let's say 200 and you know, 2 degrees, and you can see it's going up pretty rapidly in terms of temperature. So already as it's nearing about 200 degrees, you can see that the plastic is starting to melt. And uh, you know, the first part you just want it to, it's going to create a random kind of spiral-like shape because it's uh, hitting the air, the temperature isn't really consistent. Uh, but after it evens out, it will create just a flat line. That's when you know the printer is really ready to print. And again, so now it's just producing a very consistent even line. So we know that the printer setup is about good so we can start uh, printing our files. And this is also the printing uh, if you have an SD card inserted, which we do. It comes with a one key card, by the way, so you can actually use that to also load some files on there. And we have a sample print that's called dog.gcode that comes out of the box. All right, so the software that GTech uh, is packaging with the printer is called Easy Print 3D. It's something that they created themselves from the ground up. It's a very intuitive app, so if you don't want to use something more complex, it's perfectly capable, but it's a little bit buggy since, again, there's not as much development since it's only from one manufacturer. I also want to quickly point out that the E180 was originally a printer that they launched through Kickstarter. Uh, of course, this is a manufacturer that does specialize in all types of 3D printers, so they do have experience uh, with this type of stuff, uh, but again, that's where the original means of production started. So going back to Easy Print 3D, you can see this is the interface. It's pretty simple. We have a 3D visualization that I can drag around to take a look at what the print is going to be like. And you can see all of these little lines running across. That is the sliced image. So slicing means that this is uh, the layering that you'll be actually seeing in the, in the real 3D prints that you get because it's going to print from the you know bottom up in threads that are slowly spiraling up in terms of their shape. And this is what it kind of looks like in real life. You can change, of course, the density as well as the thickness of these uh, lines if you want to go into print settings and then change things like layer height or the quality from standard to a low to high. And that will change also the amount of the ink or the plastic that you need to use along with the duration time that uh, it's estimating for the entire thing to be complete. So the interface here is uh, pretty simple. It also allows us to change things like scaling. So if I tap on that, I can change you know, from a proportion 1 to something like 0 0.5 or to 2 to magnify it. Uh, but this only works with uh, files that you haven't uh, already rendered into this sliced format. So you can load something like a image, a 2D image, something like that. You can play around with it, manipulate it, and when you're satisfied, you just tap on Slicer, and that will slice the image into this. That saves it uh, into this code, G-code, which is then run on the 3D printer. And this is the same language that's used on many uh, assembly line machines, like 3D 3D printers, for instance. And on the top here, I can also start a job. I can connect from a machine directly, so I can disconnect and tap on connect again. You'll hear 
that the machine has popped back to life. Um, so right now it's uh, been connected. You can see the status as well as the temperature of the extruder displayed below here. And you can also emergency stop it when you are within a print. In terms of files that they give you as samples, uh, as an example, I can take a look at Deer or Vase, and these are the two samples they give you. Um, Vase is a very simple one that you can see is just, uh, you know, not too complex in terms of the layering as well as the designs and the shapes. It's basically half of a flower vase, but it shows you some of the capabilities as well as the layers that they have suggested for you. And then if you want to use this, you would tap on Slice and then tap on Start Job for it to run. Now, I know a lot of people aren't really fans of the GTech 3D software just because it is a little bit basic in terms of its functionality. And again, it's not the most consistent. Uh, it's sometimes a little bit slow. Sometimes it may crash. So it does support the other 3D printing software as well, such as Repetier, Host, among others. And uh, the only downside is, of course, it's not set up correctly by default to the print volume of the E180. So you have to customize this by going into printer and then changing the properties by adjusting the size to 130 by 130 by 130. And afterwards, you're more or less ready to go. And of course, as with any 3D printer, there's lots of online content available, so you don't have to be necessarily a designer or creator to start printing out lots of cool stuff. Uh, certain websites have uh, many of the source code for free for products and uh, items that other people have designed and shared, such as Thinkverse is a good example, so thinkverse.com. And from there, you can find all, all types of things from cases to different structures to collectibles uh, to various utility tools that you can print out. So here's an Eiffel Tower that you can see has been rendered. So let's go through an example very quickly. I have a G code that I've loaded up and let's just tap on start print to see what happens. So it's automatically going to now align itself into the correct uh, kind of first position of the print. It's going to start heating the nozzle into the correct temperature. So it's about 209 degrees by default. Once it reaches that temperature, it will begin printing automatically. And the software that they give you is kind of cool in that it's a visualization in real time that's mirrored across the print. So obviously because there's a portion of the printer that's blocking, you can't really tell what part of the print you're on. And uh, if you go back into the software, you can see that nothing is printed right now. But as it's going through layers, it's going to display that in real time. So there we are. It's uh, decided that it's uh, a good enough temperature now to start printing. And right now it's just drawing out the base pattern before going up higher and higher. And so it's overall pretty quick as far as, you know, the software loading experience. It just, you know, have the G code and the machine reads it and it pretty much starts printing automatically. All the speed and controls, again, are completely configurable. So taking a look at the visualization here on, on screen, again, this is what it looks like in terms of uh, what lines it's drawn currently, just these basic lines uh, on the floor of the printer. As it's printing along the background here, let's uh, go through some demonstrations of uh, finished objects that I printed. So here's a very small fox that uh, has a kind of sharp angular look that I printed out uh, just a few minutes ago. And this was scaled down to about 0.5 out of the actual size. So it's going to be always challenging for a printer like this to capture lots of small details, especially sharper corners and edges. Uh, maybe along the years here, you can see a little bit of uh, not as much precision, but you can tell that overall the general shape is captured pretty well. And considering that uh, this was done with a very hasty calibration as well as in the low quality printing set, uh, settings, overall I'm fairly impressed with uh, the effect that I'm seeing here. And uh, obviously you can change things like the plastic quality, you can change the speed if you want to print a little bit more slowly and get a higher resolution. Now that's not to say it's all perfect either because sometimes it may get misaligned or if you didn't do the right alignment process to start or the temperature of the nozzle is too high, uh, you know, the result can sometimes get uh, off balance. So this is a good example of that. This was supposed to be an attempt at the Space Needle which uh, started off actually pretty well but as it got higher and higher you can tell that at one point it may have fallen off from the edge and as a result created a very avant-garde uh, kind of modernist looking structure that is definitely not what I was going for originally. Of course I can pull this out or cut off and trim out some of the corners and still get a Space Needle like uh, overall structure but again it's not perfect especially since this is really a budget model. Uh, so you do have to still kind of monitor things as you're printing to make sure that everything is for the most part going correctly. In terms of a flatter uh, surfaces and kind of sharper corners, it actually handles it very well as you can see here. And the overall speed isn't bad either. Um, a basic print like this uh, cute little fox here or the Space Needle that I attempted took only about uh, 20 minutes, around 15 minutes to complete. So it's actually pretty quick for something like this, which is about the height of uh, maybe two quarters stacked together. Uh
So that's more or less it for our review of the GTEC E180. Overall, would I recommend this? Well, for only $250, it is one of the least expensive fully assembled 3D printers on the market, and it claims to have extreme ease of use even for first-time users. But unfortunately, I did find that there is still a pretty sharp learning curve from getting the software installed correctly on your computer to figuring out what G-code is. However, of course, it still saves you a lot of time from things like assembly, and the overall process has definitely been streamlined by GTEC, and it's also pretty affordable. So if you're trying to get into 3D printing for the first time, I wouldn't say that this is a bad uh, 3D printer to try out. I would say that the quality is actually pretty good for the price, and you get a lot of features that you don't really tend to see on a conventional 3D printer like cloud-based, Wi-Fi-based printing, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, overall, as long as you want to print out smaller objects and without as much resolution or detail as a more expensive model, I think that you'll be satisfied, and this is a great kit to start experimenting around with. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. This has been the GTEC E180 Wi-Fi cloud-based mini 3D printer.